how, how is this going to piss off all the Litecoin miners? <laughs> well, they're the it ones doesn't jacking matter. up the you know prices. What? My Litecoin is going to work in single monitor or Ifinity. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. That's an interesting thing. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, Ken pointed this out. Oops. Uh, Ken pointed this out the other day that like 280Xs and 290Xs and 290s are like three or $400 over their MSRPs now because people are buying them to do Litecoin mining. Yeah. That's crazy. Rarer than hen's teeth. I, I don't. So AMD, I guess at the end of the day, doesn't give a crap, right? Like they're, they're just, selling cards. They're, they're selling partners, products, selling but cards. but they're selling they're selling cards. But what they may be losing out on is that gamer. So the person who's buying a gaming card, they made a decision to get a two ninety. Um, they go to buy it. They go to Newegg or Amazon through our handy link on the right hand side at pcper dot com, uh, and they can't find any of those cards. So they ended up buying a seven eighty or a seven eighty Ti or a seven seventy instead. Now they're in the NVIDIA ecosystem. Now they try something like Shield or they try something like Shadowplay or they try something uh, like G-Sync or they try something like SLI. And now they're in that NVIDIA ecosystem while those coin miners, they don't have any kind of continuing purchase mentality, right? The yeah, next, they, when the they next don't generation, buy games. They don't want games. They don't want any of that. They don't want – the next generation comes around. They're not going to necessarily – they're not going to have any loyalty towards AMD, Um they're just going to go with whatever makes them the most money for the least amount of power cost each month. But for the gamer, you're creating more of a relationship with how now they're being introduced. Maybe the maybe they were AMD gamers for a long time. And now they're seeing Nvidia. They go, oh man, look at look at what GeForce Experience does, and look at their driver updates. And you know they're they're being exposed to this other uh, part of the market that they weren't exposed to before. And so I think AMD, you know, they're not getting that three hundred dollars above MSRP. Like they're not seeing that. That's the resellers are seeing that. Um, so good for yeah, Amazon. What, good what for what happens Huey. when uh, the Litecoin Asics come out in another six months, and the guys who are mining decide, you know, I don't need seven cards in my house. They're gonna sell them. I'm gonna sell them. And so then Ken who was telling then me picks those puppies up. Well, Ken was telling me about some people who had like two nineties and two ninety X's that they had purchased. Let's say you bought a two ninety for three hundred ninety nine dollars. Well, now you can sell it. To some miner, and by miner I mean M I N E R, not O R, for like two hundred dollars over what you paid for it. Now you take that money, and now you buy a GTX seven eighty Ti or something like that. Or they were selling like two seventy nine fifties and buying a seven eighty Ti. So they were selling selling two seventy nine fifties and buying a seven eighty Ti. Or something, like that. something in that in that range, right? So it's creating this weird ecosystem of. Like where the AMD cards are overpriced for their gaming levels, right? If, you, if we look at it strictly as a gamer, if you're not like into this whole Bitcoin whatever stuff, you look at it strictly as a gamer. Now the AMD cards are jacked up in prices. So now you're not getting into that ecosystem. You're not interested in Crossfire. You're not interested in TrustFX. You're not interested in um, other stuff like uh, the Raptor app and all the other kind of things that they're trying to get people on board with. You fall into the NVIDIA camp kind of almost by default because prices there are more reasonable because they have lower compute performance, but that doesn't really affect you much on the gaming side. It's really, it's really weird. It's, it's really odd. And it, like if, yeah, Ken is, I mean, that's, if you can't hear any background noise, Ken's running. He was running some 6990s, apparently, he said, and those things are loud, he reminded me. Oh, listen to that. Oh, hold on, listen. But you know what? If, if on, you listen. were an econ shh, major, shh, shh, this would listen. make an awesome research paper. Listen. All right. Anyway, yeah, I think you're right. Um, it would to see. Well, I mean, so Ken's going to do a story on these light coins, how much each GPU can earn, and what the power cost is, uh, and how long it would take you to you know pay off these cards at their MSRP versus you know let's look at an average cost of a card that day um, to help people make a decision. But it's kind of it's just disappointing. Like Jeremy was talking today in our in our chat about having to change the hardware leaderboard up because he had an R9 290 as a recommendation for, I think, the high-end system, and we had to take it off because you can't find one for anywhere close to their MSRP anymore. So AMD kind of misses out on these. Uh, I, you know, For a company that is so focused on social media and community engagement and all this other stuff, 
this is going to hurt that, I think, right? You'll get some buzz, you'll get some traffic, people will talk about your, your bit mining, your Bitcoin mining and your Litecoin mining uh, performance, but at the end of the day, like a year from now, what will that be, right? Those stores are gone. Those people that are mining are now buying ASICs. They don't care about your products. They're reselling products back into the market instead of, it's like a used game market, right? Now they're they're getting rid of all this, all this crap. And so uh, AMD and board vendors and resellers aren't getting any of that profit anymore. It'll be interesting to see what happens in, I don't know, you said six months. Ken said it would be less than six months before those ASICs are out the door and ready. To be fair, it is substantially harder to make ASICs for Litecoins and those derivatives because they use script instead of SHA-256. And script is very memory intensive sure. and difficult to build into an ASIC, so they won't be as effective. So we may see this last longer than mm. it did for Bitcoins. It's interesting. We'll have a story on it sometime in the not-too-distant future. Uh, let's get into our hardware. I want dog coin. Dog coin. Wow. Such currency. Such profit. Much yes. much profit. Wow. Yeah, wow. 